Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at some uh, specific solutions to the Schrodinger equation. So remember, the time-independent Schrodinger equation uh, is written in terms of the Hamiltonian acting on um, some wave function phi of x, and this is just the time-independent part. Remember, we can always add the time-dependent part in later. This is defined to be minus h bar squared over 2m grad squared plus v of x, all acting on phi of x, and this thing equals e phi of x. Uh, so in one dimension, which is the case we'll be interested in in most of this course, uh, we can write this more simply, uh, just taking the more complicated part here, as minus h bar squared over 2m phi double prime of x uh, plus vx phi of x equals e phi of x. So it's, uh, in this case, it's just uh, a second order ordinary differential equation. Um, it's an eigenvalue problem. We need to find the eigenfunctions phi, which solve this equation, uh, and the uh, corresponding eigenvalues e, which will be the energies of the system, the energies the particle can take. Uh, and in general, to specify such a problem, we, if we've got some physical system we want to model with quantum mechanics, uh, we just write down a potential that that's, uh, encodes that system, and then uh, we have to solve the time-independent Schrodinger equation for that potential subject to boundary conditions. So the simplest possible um, potential we can consider is just uh, the case where the potential is equal to zero. So the simplest case, v equals zero. Uh, and when the potential is equal to zero, our time-independent Schrodinger equation just reads minus h bar squared uh, over 2m phi double prime equals e phi. Uh, this can be solved with an ansatz. We can say that phi of x is equal to a plus or minus e to the i plus or minus kx, where a plus or minus are just some uh, arbitrary coefficients. Uh, and when we substitute this in, we find that h bar squared k squared over 2m phi equals e phi. Um, and in other words, the energy eigenvalues e that we've solved for are equal to h bar squared k squared over 2m. And now when we take a look back at the problem we're trying to solve, so here's the time-independent Schrodinger equation in 1D, we're trying to solve for the energy eigenvalues, and energies of course have two contributions. They have the potential energy term, which is here, and the kinetic energy term, which must be this thing over here. So we've set the potential equal to zero, so the energy should be purely kinetic. Uh, and a kinetic energy we'd usually expect to be able to write um, p squared over 2m. So this is true, provided that p equals h bar k. You can see from here. But this is nothing other than our de Broglie relation. Which tells us that um, for uh, all quantum particles uh, have a wave-like uh, description as well, and the momentum p of a uh, of the particle uh, corresponds to a wave vector k for the wave. We can also write this as p equals h over lambda, where lambda is the wavelength. So I said that in general, uh, solving the time-independent Schrodinger equation is actually the tricky bit, the bit we've already done here. Um, we then get the time dependence uh, kind of for free. So let's take a look at the um, time dependent Schrodinger equation, TDSE. Okay. Uh, so this reads I h bar psi dot, uh, where the dot indicates uh, the partial derivative of psi with respect to time holding position constant, equals h psi in general, and in this case this equals e psi, because we've already solved the time independent part. So psi um, adds in the time dependence corresponding to phi that we've already solved for. So uh, we can again solve this with an ansatz. Let's say that psi of x and t is equal to a plus or minus e to the i 
plus or minus kx as before, and this time minus omega t. So remember that uh, the time dependence of an energy eigenvalue always just adds this phase winding term. When we substitute this in, we bring down a minus i omega. Uh, there's an i here already, the i cancels with the minus i, and we find that h bar omega psi equals e psi, or in other words, e equals h bar omega, which is nothing other than our Einstein relation. Recall, Einstein said, um, take light, which is classically described by a, a wave, and we can say that um, another way to think of that is that it's made up of individual packets of energy called quanta or photons, and um, if a photon has angular frequency omega, it has energy E. Another way to write this is uh, E equals H f, where f is the frequency of the photon. Now, we're not describing photons with the Schrodinger equation, we're describing uh, non-relativistic massive particles, such as electrons, um, but these two obey something like an Einstein relation, and that's by construction part of the Schrodinger equation. So um, that's the, the first example of a simple solution to the Schrodinger equation. Okay, thank you for your time.